Hello and welcome to the second session of the module one. In the last uh, session, we got started with big data and understood what big data is. Uh, we understood three principles uh, in velocity, variety, and volume of data, which uh, conglomeration makes it uh, a big data. But how do you process big data? How do you churn out some of the meaningful information from uh, those volumes of data which discussed coming from different sources? You need some sort of toolings to perform your data analytics on top of the data right so apache spark is the solution to the problem wherein it's, it's a unified analytics engine for large scale data processing but is apache spark the only tool uh, to process your data absolutely no there there were set of tools and uh, uh, hadoop with map is one such tools which helped in initially solving the problem however it had its own issue hadoop is generally slow compared to spark spark is considered to be 100 times faster than hadoop and um, that's why spark is widely been uh, taken up as one of the open source and people now are switching from hadoop to um, to spark so let's talk about uh, the architecture of Spark, how does the Spark looks like and what are the underlying APIs it has. So Apache Spark is a unified analytics engine for processing your large data sets. It's provide, it provides high level APIs uh, in the form of uh, different languages. It also supports a rich set of tools of higher level toolings like uh, SQL, Spark Streaming, Graphics, uh, Machine Learning Library. Spark Streaming is uh, a tool which helps you to continuously stream your streaming job as the name suggests because your data is coming continuously you don't have a static data uh, maybe from your uh, IoT devices or your IPTVs or your CCTV cameras data are coming continuously 24 7 and you want to make sure that there is some sort of engine which which never stops and always uh, process your data in those scenario use the uh, spark streaming spark sql is again uh, for sql and uh, structured data processing graph is, is for graph processing wherein you can build graphs and those visualization for your end user and then you've got machine learning libraries uh, for machine learning platforms uh, what are the tools or APIs which you could use to write your Spark application. You could use Python uh, and it kind of consumes the Python libraries and called as PySpark to run your Python application in Spark. You could use uh, R as well and you could use SQL. Obviously Scala uh, can be used as well because Spark is built on top of Scala so that kind of by default language which comes up with. So Spark is primarily written in uh, Scala make, makes making Spark's default language as well. And uh, you could use any language of your choices, uh, Python, uh, Spark SQL as well to support set of uh, SQL queries which you generally use, you could use inside your Spark application as well. So these are set of tools and libraries which you could use and that's built on Spark Core. Let's talk about how does, when we talk about when we want to build a Spark application and we want to run our Spark application, how does that work? So whenever you have run some sort of Spark queries or application, uh, the something happens in the background. Uh, background, it initiate a device manager. Device manager actually takes care of your Spark cluster. What does a Spark cluster consist of? It consists of a driver or a uh, called as a spark driver wherein device manager would tell that spark driver to run certain jobs which is written by the data engineers or scientists then spark driver would actually run some executors these executors run on worker nodes spark runs on a driver and a worker model master and slave model spark driver would instruct the executor to run on certain virtual machines or worker nodes and these executors would actually run the jobs for you so it consists of a driver process and a set of executor process the driver on the left hand side runs your main function or your main application sits on the cluster which is managed by a device manager could be mesos could be uh, kubernetes uh, could be your uh, 
um, standalone spark cluster as well and driver is absolutely essential it's the heart of your application maintain all the relevant information that which job now to run uh, and uh, how how to handle all the executors and then the executors are responsible for actually carrying out the work which you have written in your application assigned by the driver itself this means that each executor is responsible for two things primarily executing the code assigned to it by the driver and to the driver it is assigned to the device manager by you or the or, or the uh, data engineer and then executor reports the state of the computation wherein it was able to run the job successfully or not to back to the uh, spark driver let's talk about a uh, important fundamental called spark session uh, now you can run your job wherein we'll also see how you could run your application spark application to 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 churn out some meaning out of the raw data uh, however before that let's talk about a fundamental called spark session in front of you there's a screenshot which uh, it's a it's a utility command line interface which which helps you to write your spark queries before converting into an application um, so it gives you cli wherein um, you can just uh, practice or run some of your spark queries or the functions before elevating into application but before that uh, there's an entry point called as spark session uh, so to enter into your spark world you need an entry point and that is your spark session which tells the driver to to run certain function so using this spark session you can uh, run any of your application which we are going to see so let's probably hit back to our terminal i've got my terminal opened uh, so you could just install your spark on your local system and run some queries as well let's probably try to run some simple queries um, I'm, i've opened a pi spark session as you can see what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna define a variable uh, now that variable could be named as variable equals to spark that's gonna be the entry point if you remember and then you could use any function so this function could be range and you want to go up to 100 so now the variable is loaded this is transformation spark consists of if you have heard about etl extract transform and load so that's the process of transformation you read the data you transform it and you take some action on top of it so you've read the data now it's time to take some action actions are primarily uh, like show or count or or print these are the actions which you take on top of your transformation if you do a show that's gonna give you a range of uh, 20 20 integer up to 100 and you could just define that how many range up to how many integer you want define n as uh, a value and then you could just see uh, all the values which you'd find under the variable so you've limited them by using uh, n equals to four five and that only shows you five integers so that these are the transformation and uh, and uh, uh, actions which you can take uh, a simple very simple queries you could just run some of the uh, advanced transformation also like reading a file so probably let's give an example as read file i read f equals to what you're going to do is first thing is spark that's going to be the entry point and then your read function and then you want to read a text i have already created a file with the name as create cluster dot json and I, I want to read this file once i load the entire data onto the read f variable you could now apply actions on top of your transformation which could be dot probably show it is going to show all the content of your file underneath the value or it could just count the number of lines in your file as well so that's going to be read f dot count you could run an advanced filter as well so let's probably do a filter equals to read the file which is read file variable uh, dot filter and I want to read the file wherein underneath the value which is right over here I want to read 
for a word I want to look up for the word which has num in it I want to make sure that it contains num and just capture those num value if I just now run filter dot show it is going to only show uh, what I have defined in my filter criteria which is contains that's how you could just run few of the sample queries locally and then elevate this into your application so spy spark or spark session or spark shell uh, all of these are used to run locally and then used to run your application locally rather than a cluster now these clusters would be spinned up could be spinned up on uh, azure kubernetes Databricks or your uh, plain Kubernetes hosted on GCP, Azure, AWS could be anything. Let's get, get back to our uh, presentation again and try to see um, what else we have. So let's probably look at the evolution of Spark. We discussed about the architecture, we discussed about the libraries and APIs available. Uh, how did Spark uh, evolve over the time? So initially it was started by Matai uh, Zaharai uh, at uh, UC Berkeley at Amp Lab in 2009. That's where it all started. And then the um, the product Spark was open source in 2009, and in 2013 the project was licensed under Apache, and that's why it is called as now Apache Spark, amongst the other product of Apache as well. And in 2014, Databricks was found and commercialized, uh, and there was Data Academy, uh, Databricks Academy, and all those of certification which is done, and that's what we're going to discuss in the next video in details. So that's how Spark evolved from to solve the problems uh, identified uh, from Hadoop wherein uh, it was uh, the AMP lab uh, researcher had worked with multiple map reduce users to understand the benefits and drawbacks of the programming language and therefore synthesizing the list of the problems and that uh, began to evolution of spark Let's look at the summary. We got started with the Spark architecture. Uh, before that, we talked about uh, Hadoop and its limitation. Uh, we then saw how a Spark job actually runs using a driver and executor. And in the demo, we ran some of the queries locally to understood what Spark is and how could you run uh, or test your local uh, Spark queries and before that, elevating into your actual application. That's it for this video. In the next session, we're going to get started with Databricks and its architecture. And then we're going to understand how Databricks uh, has evolved as a part of Apache Spark program. All right, that's it for now. Thank you.